is a new trend that I've seen on Instagram to create carousels that have a collage -y feel. Now carousels are becoming more and more popular again because now you can add music to them which means they also show up on the Reels feed. And one of the popular ways to create carousels at the moment is a collage style look. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can create that look in Canva and make it your own and easily create this trending style of carousel. So let's dive into Canva and get creating. All right, let's create a cool collage style carousel. So the first thing you want to do is choose your size. So we want to go in and put in Instagram. Now these days it's best to go with the four to five ratio rather than square, but of course it's also up to you. If you prefer square, feel free to go with that, but I'm gonna use the four to five ratio today. All right, so first of all, we wanna think about our background. So with something like this, you probably want a more textured background. So this is where we can really utilize canvas elements. So we can put in something like paper. See, all now, obviously this is gonna also depend if you have free or pro as to what things you've got options with, but there are plenty to choose from. Now with a textured background and it's gonna be a carousel, you'd want to find a texture that's fairly repetitive so that as you have more pages, it's not gonna feel like it suddenly changes too much. It's gonna feel like it flows. So you want a sort of a subtle repetitive kind of texture in there. As for our first one, you want to have some sort of hook, some sort of headline text. So we could say five ways to so by splitting it up like this it means we've got some creativity here so we can make this section bigger we could even change the fonts and maybe have this one a different font. Now being a collage effect, you may want to have more hand-drawn kind of fonts, but that's up to you too and how you want to tie this back to your own branding. If you just want a collage style graphics but want to keep with your own brand fonts and things like that, that is up to you and what you're trying to achieve here. So, so if you are looking for any kind of hand-done fonts, you want to put in here handwriting. So it's actually got this here, handwriting. And it's going to give you all the handwritten fonts within Canva so that you can find something with that kind of feel if you want. Now, if you have a pro account, you've also got the option to upload fonts. So if you've got some really cool fonts, maybe your own brand font or a font that you've bought, you can also utilize them. So to do that, what you'd have to do is go here to upload a font and select your font file. This font here. And I've also got another one. This one here, which are two sort of hand drawn fonts. So it really gives it that feel. But obviously, as I said, this is depends on what kind of feel you're overall trying to achieve. Are you trying to bring this into your branding and have more your branded nice fonts? Or are you trying to really create that collage hand created feel? Now we can also change up the colors. So this again is where you want to think about your branding, the overall look that you're trying to create. So you make it your own. And once we've got our text in place, now we can start to get a little bit more creative. So you do want to consider too, if you want to add any elements to let people know that this is a carousel and there's more pages, you may want like a little arrow or something like that. So we could add in like a hand-drawn arrow. Or you can put in numbers to say this is page one of something. You can also add in things like your name if you want to make sure you've branded it. So all those little additional bits of text you want to be adding in and getting everything into position. So then you know what space you've got to work around it to create your actual graphics. By putting the text in first, then we've got the space available to get creative around it. If you try to get creative first and then put the text in, you're sort of going backwards. You want to know, okay, this is the white space that I have available now to now add some graphics. And that's now where I, so I can now start thinking about that. So now I'm going to show you a variety of different ways that we can create these graphics. So the first way we can do it is actually find an element that's already there. So we can put in something like scrapbook in our search and we can find all these little scrappy elements. So that's probably the most simple way is just to go and find some pre-made scrapbooky elements. So you can search for things like tape, scrap paper, cutouts. Think of all those words that might give you those sort of imagery. And if there's and if there's specific things that you're looking for, you may also want to include them. So we may want scrap coffee. And we've got things that are coffee stained. So it's just a matter of really just... So this is where you can sort of search around, find some fun things, see what you can find within the app. See what you can find within Canvas graphics. Now, as you can see here, if we put in photos, 
we've got paper but if we go to graphics we've got uh, some other options here too so there's even more that comes up when we put in graphics as you can see there's lots of different elements so there's plenty to choose from to just work with straight off the bat like that and as you start selecting things there's also magic recommendations that come up that can show you similar things and if you really like a particular style like say I really love that and I feel like that's going to really suit I can actually click the three dots here and say see more by that same person and see all and as you can see, I can now find lots of elements by that person that is going to give me that same look and feel. So this one is sort of watercolor sketches. So that could be another thing that you could put in if you want sort of illustration style. If you can't find cutout graphics that you want to use and you want to use other things, the other thing we can do is find images, is either find images or upload your own images and cut them out. And there's a few different ways that we can cut them out to give them that scrapbook feel. So say for example I really like this image here and I wanted to give it a cutout effect. There's a few different ways we can do that depending on the look you want to create your scrapbooky feel with. So we can just simply click on background remover and it's going to get rid of the background and that's the easiest way we can have our own scrap elements is just simply finding images we like and removing the background. Now if things are a little messy and there's only certain bits that you want, so say for example we wanted this laptop but we didn't want the plants in the way so we were going to go to background remover Remover. Once it is done, we want to click on that background remover again, and then you want to choose Erase and get rid of the elements that you don't want. So this is handy if there's lots of elements on the page and there's only one particular element that you actually wanted. You can use that Erase tool to get rid of all the bits that you don't want so that it just cuts just what you do want. So that way we can just cut out anything we don't want. So that's very handy too with images like this where there's lots of different elements in it and say we just wanted the hat. We can go background remover, click it again, use the erase tool and get rid of all those extra elements that we don't want. So as you can see then, then we would just have the hat. Now if you wanted to do something like this but give it a scrapbooky feel that feels like somebody has cut it out, there are two ways that we can do this. So let's say we wanted to use this Christmas tree and we wanted to feel like somebody's cut it out with scissors. So one way we can do that is use that background remover again and this time we want to choose restore and what you can do then is go back around it and add in area that you want to keep. So this way it looks as if it's been cut out with some background still left. Now this way can be a bit more tedious but depending on the element you have and the look you're trying to create this can be a great way to get exactly the area you want to stay there so that it looks more cut out. So you'd have something like this. Now another way we can do this is using an app. So let's say we wanted to use these images here of presents. What we can do is go into apps and what you want to do is search choppy crop. So you want to get this one here that's called choppy crop. What we can do is actually start to cut it out. So you click to cut. So you really want to just click around as if somebody was cutting it out with scissors. Now, of course, this is very rough. This isn't going to be somebody cutting it out beautifully. It's the, really that scrappy kind of somebody just cut it out to put it in and gives it that really cool scrapbook feel. So we've got our cut. Now we press add to design and it's going to give you it as a separate image. And there we have our scrappy cutout. So as you can see, there's a few different ways we can create these scrapbooking feel. We can find elements that already have a scrapbook feel to them because they're cut out. We can just plain use a background remover to cut things out. We can use the background remover and then use the restore tool to bring some of it back to look cut out. Or we can use the choppy crop app to cut it out in that choppy straight line kind of way. Now there is one other style we can use when we use the background remover. So if we remove the background from an image or find an image that already has the background removed, another technique we can do is add an outline. So once we have our image, we're going to go to edit and then you're going to choose shadows here and outline. Now you can choose whatever color and whatever thickness you want. So often that cutout feel and creating that collagey look often want to go white and then we'd want just a little bit, a few millimeters, nothing too big. And obviously that's going to stand out more when you have a dark background. So that particular background, it didn't work so well. But if we had a darker background, that's when something like that can look really good because it helps make that image really stand out and it really separates it from the background. So that can be another really great technique for these collage style carousels. 
So there's lots of different ways that we can create this scrapbooking feel and you can layer it up with different things. Maybe you've got the choppy crop to cut out some images, but then you go into elements and find some things like tape or paper and things like that to add to it. Now, another important part when it comes to a carousel is consistency. So we want our pages to flow. And when we're using things like this, where we've got lots of different imagery. It could easily feel messy. So something you can do to create better flow is repeat certain things. So what we could do, first of all, is use the same font again. We can write in what we want it to say in that same font. But then we want to add some graphical elements that repeat so it feels more like it's all part of the same thing and flows. So what you could do is maybe let's say we use this tape here. We use that tape again in this page here. Maybe we get some more paper. And we had that on the page as well. And maybe we place it on this page too. And so there's that repetition. So you don't have to choose anything in particular that's repeated, but make sure you choose something that's repeated over and over again. And that's going to make something like this, where there's a lot of variety with lots of different imagery, really flow. So you've got that same background. You've also got maybe a few little You've also got a few little things like maybe tape or cut out bits of paper that repeat over and over. And that's going to make your overall carousel design flow a lot more and feel cohesive. Now, the last thing is actually making images flow from page to page. So say we didn't just want a completely different collage look on each page. We wanted an image to sort of flow from one page to the next. So we'll say with this one, we wanted it so that it goes over to the next page. How would we do that with something like this? So what we can do, so to do that, what you would do is put it in position of where you want it to sit. So say I wanted this much to show on this page and the overflow is what we want to show on the next page. So now we're going to go over to elements and we're going to grab just a square and you're going to place it in the corner and just make it overlap that image. So you can see, so that way we know that's what the corner of that page is. Now we want to select both. And you're going to copy, so Control-C or Command-C, or you can right-click and press copy. Then you go to your next page and paste it. Now it's going to paste it in the exact same position as that first page. We want to move it to the other side. So you're just going to use your keyboard and you just press Shift and Arrow and slowly move it across. And this is going to help us position it exactly. So as you get closer, you want to go really slow. And you want to wait till that rectangle completely disappears. So you really want to go slow. So there's a slither, one more, there's still a slither and it's gone. So the moment it's completely gone, we now have it perfect. So now we can adjust other things on the page. Obviously you'd want to keep designing it and make it all work. So we can go back to the first page, remove that. Now when we go to grid view, you can see that it lines up. So that's how we would make scrapbook elements line up so that we can make them go across pages if we don't just want them on individual pages. So I hope this got you inspired for creating some collage carousels and some different techniques that you can use to create that sort of effect. Now, if you would like to download this template I have, which is a collage style carousel, you can find the link to that in the description below. I created this as a bit of a lessons from 2024, but you can download this at any time and make it your own. You can, you know, obviously change the text and turn it into whatever you want, find new images, but it can give you a bit of a starting point and also just inspire you for creating this style of carousel. So give this a go yourself, have some fun with it. This collage style is a lot of fun and you can really get creative with it. So have some fun with it, get playful with it and create some fun carousels for Instagram. And if you'd like to learn more about using Canva, graphic design and about branding, make sure you subscribe and happy creating. <laughs>